Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our session. This is Chi Hui Zhao from China Mobile and Sasha Kumar from Huawei. Um, today's topic is thoughts on te telco cloud native evolution and open source practice. Uh, ever since 2019, cloud native has become one of the hottest topic within telecommunication industries. Um, China Mobile has also done a lot of research and participated in many SDOs and open source projects. So within today's session, uh, we'll introduce you our thoughts on telco cloud native evolution and uh, one of the op most important open source practice. Um, firstly, let's look at China Mobile's cloud computing situation. Um, China Mobile has three types of cloud, e-cloud, IT cloud, and network cloud. Uh, e-cloud is our public cloud. It can provide general and standard cloud services to individual users, as well as some customized cloud solution to the enterprise users. And also, uh, this cloud carries some of CMCC's uh, service platforms like AI platform, uh, big data platform, uh, IT Cloud is a private cloud to carry CMCC's internal IT systems, for example, our customer service system, charging systems, and uh, email systems, and things like that. Uh, the overall design of this cloud is based on the requirements of our IT systems. Uh, so this is about IT Cloud. And the other cloud is Network Cloud. This is the most important cloud for us as an operator. It carries 4G, 5G network functions, some value-added network functions, such as the multimedia messaging service. Uh, and also, it carries some network function-related management systems, for example, the Mano system, EMS, and things like that. Uh, this cloud is also a private cloud, but it has very, very strong uh, telecom features. So by looking at all the three type of clouds, uh, as eCloud and IT Cloud has less uh, telco features and telco histories, uh, they go faster on the cloud native evolution. Uh, our eCloud is also providing past services for for applications to achieve cloud native. Currently, a uh, container as cloud native infrastructure is already online. Um, our IT cloud also has the PaaS platform and the containerization rate of its services is 100% for now. But however, uh, the cloud native upgrade of network cloud is much, much slower. Currently, the virtualized infrastructure is now the resource. Automation rate is still very low. Uh, the container and microservice is still invisible. So for, for today's topic, the cloud native evolution is mainly about this cloud. Um, here, let's have an overview of CMCC's network cloud. Um, since 2018, CMCC has been establishing centralized network cloud in eight districts in China. Our 5G core IMS EPC are running on this cloud. Uh, the cloud ratio of CMCC's network is up to 75%, and currently we are planning to build edge cloud in each of our 31 provinces. Um, our network cloud uses a NFE plus SDN as our technical structure. Uh, the infrastructure is now a virtual machine and OpenStack is used to do infrastructure management. Um, network functions are all the NFs in virtual machines. Uh, containers are involved but uh, are wrapped within virtual machines and not visible or manageable. Uh, we'll gradually introduce manageable containers and CNFs into our network cloud. And after introducing basic info of our network cloud, let's look at the motivation of telco operator evolved towards cloud native. The first motivation comes from service development. So currently, 5G and edge computing now serves major enterprise customers. 
uh, which may face uh, diverse requirements compared with individual users. Let's take 5G core slicing as an example. Use cases of different industry needs different 5G core network slice. Uh, the network slice required by NB-IoT applications, such as uh, smart metering, requires mainly signaling functions, and the bandwidth needed is only up to several kilobps. However, the network slice used by video broadcasting applications requires mainly data transmission capabilities, and the bandwidth varies from uh, 10 megabit per second to 100 megabit per second. So, to better meet customers' requirements, Network Cloud needs to improve its agility and flexibility. And this uh, agility and flexibility can be achieved by Cloud Native. Uh, the second motivation is from technical evolution of the whole industry. So cloud native te technologies such as uh, container and microservice architecture has already been used in the uh, existing network cloud, but invisibly. So in the future, uh, we want to make this visible, manageable and maintainable so that we can fully benefit from cloud native. Um, the third motivation comes from the need to optimize our network cloud. Um, as more network functions will move onto the cloud, uh, we definitely need to improve the resource utilization, product delivery speed, and reduce the cost and management difficulty. So um, we think that moving towards cloud native is an inevitable trend. Um, here, we think that it requires combined evolution of network functions, network cloud, culture, and design mind to achieve better cloud native. Firstly, an agile infrastructure platform should be built and platform services should be provided. Uh, container and Kubernetes should be selected as the new infrastructure and orchestrator. Paths that contains all the common and reusable services should be built so that all the network functions could only focus on business logics and the time to market of new network services could be shortened. So this is the base for cloud native. And then uh, network functions should be in microservice architecture to achieve flexibility. This also requires the platform can support the running and management of microservices. Uh, this is the key part of cloud native. And also CICD and DevOps culture should be involved to achieve automation. Uh, this can help us to speed up the net lengthy and slow purchasing and online procedures. And last, all the developers and maintainers should follow cloud thinking in their design and management, uh, which is using decouple, sharing, resilience, and automation ideas in their development and management. So uh, there are these are about high-level action points for network cloud to achieve cloud native. Until now, China Mobile has done a lot to explore cloud native evolution, and this page is a conclusion. So we have been doing technical research on container and microservice and paths. Uh, for container, we have worked out uh, technical architecture and done testing trials. Uh, although our attitude on introducing container to our core cloud is relatively conservative, but a technical standard is ready for use and we have started using it on edge. Um, for microservice, uh, design and management is the topic. Uh, by looking at network function design from many partners, we draw the conclusion that there's no standard on network function microservice design, but uh, commonly this still follows the structure of uh, physical network functions, uh, which contains load balancer, 
uh, business processing unit, OAM unit, and data storage unit. But currently, developers are do working on splitting these big units into some smaller pieces. And for microservice management, uh, we, we don't have any solutions for this yet, but we think knowing whether or to manage or not, what to manage and how to manage is the direction uh, on microservice research. research. And for PaaS, uh, we have working on PaaS structure and capability in Network Cloud. Um, how to involve PaaS and merge with NFA structure or even change it is one of the key questions we're trying to answer now. And what PaaS capabilities and corresponding use cases is another thing we are exploring right now. And this is uh, currently happening in XDevelop project. Um, so these are about technical research. Um, on the standard promotion part, our team has also done a lot. Um, we have relatively mature technical standard and interface standard for container layers. Uh, we have design principles for cloud native ap applications in network cloud, um, standard for cloud native maturity evaluation for applications, and technical standard for paths of telecom network cloud. Uh, these two are, are what we started this year. And in ITU, we lead one standard named functional requirements of paths for cloud native ap applications. And in Etsy, uh, we are now following an FE 19 uh, report on VNF generic OAM functions, because this is an important use case of PaaS to implement cloud-native OAM functions. So these are about standard promotion. And on open source practice, uh, we follow CNCF projects, including Kubernetes, Knative, and many others. And also, we started a new one named Xdevela to explore platform capabilities required by Network Cloud. Uh, we have found that uh, Cloud Native is closely related to first-hand experience of network function design, development, and operation. So it requires us as an operator to engage in all these procedures and have some internal look into the network functions at code level. So we think that um, start from open source practice is a good way. Um, then I'll hand over to Sashu to introduce XGVela, which is the most important uh, open source project we have been participated in. Uh, thanks, Shihui, for the handover and the uh, nice introduction of the problem statement which we had before. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, this is Seishu Kumar from Huawei. Uh, now we'll be talking about XGVela. So XGVela is a, a next generation um, pla pass platform. It's an open source cloud native telecom pass platform, which actually is trying to address some of the issues which have been discussed in the previous slides by Shihui. Let's jump into the details of XGVela and how it's all set. Next slide, please. Right, so this is an overview of XGVela. Um, XGVela as such started in last year, 2020 April, and uh, we actually started with 13 members uh, or as a TS members, and we have also have other contributors who are, who are more than eager to join and uh, join us in, that, in this course. In this course. Um, the, the main scope of XGVela, as you see here, is that we are uh, a plus plus of uh, general pass, you can call them general pass plus plus, which is ma mainly looking at the telecom specific uh, problem areas. When we say it, uh, we are mainly saying that we extend ourselves from the general pass platform, but we actually go with the specialization of the specific problems which arise as a part of the telecos. Uh, general pass as such is pretty uh, mm -hmm. exhaustive. It is something which actually takes care of a lot of stuff coming from the, uh, uh, the enterprise and all. It's mainly designed for enterprise. So when uh, when we actually try to apply it uh, uh, with one is to one on on the telecos, we find many of these integrations are not smooth. 
So with that in mind, and to make sure that this is actually coming as a, a standard alignment, we want to make a, a pass platform above it. As you see in the diagram here, we have the IAS and CAS. Uh, CAS can also be by bare metal or it can be on top of IAS. That's absolutely fine with the way we want to take it. And then we have the general pass, which is a blue uh, blue box, which is what we can show in the dotted line, in the dotted uh, area within the red, uh, red uh, lines. On top of it is what we have two major things. One is a green and the other is yellow. So a scope of XGVLA is mainly on these two areas. That is the yellow part and the green part. Uh, these two areas are, are, is what constitutes our main scope, which actually talks about the extensions to the general pass and then the adaptation layer. By adaptation layer, we are talking about that area specific to which we will be adapting ourselves to general pass or we extend general pass to do a specific uh, job which is required by us to do the, anything on top of this. So as you see the lines uh, which go from the top to bottom, out of scope, uh, as you see top of it, we do have some things which are green. They are all the APIs which we expose from the Teleco Pass itself and the blue lines which are still there to those specific areas which we require to be done directly from general pass. So I know it's a little confusing with the diagram at the first glance. Uh, I'll try to explain it further as we move on. The applications are what we actually run it on the purple. You can see the purple boxes are, are what we intend to have applications. Uh, there are different kinds of applications which we are trying to do right now. Uh, but for the, phase, for the phase one or the first release, we try to actually have this green uh, box and the yellow box. And yellow box is what we are trying to do with a specific like uh, uh, general pass like OKD, um, OpenShift uh, Kubernetes uh, distribution. Uh, so that is what is what we are trying to actually do the integration part and then showcase some of the functionalities. Uh, next slide, please, Shikui. Right, so this is what is extension which I was talking about. Here, maybe we'll get a better picture as to what we meant by the previous diagram. Uh, these are all past management platform, as you see on the right-hand uh, side, the vertical box, which actually talks about the complete uh, functionality which is required vertical across the past layers. That is, uh, whether we are talking about specialization or generalization, which is what we require across. The general pass actually tries to signify some of the uh, key areas which actually uh, cater to uh, the major uh, functionalities which is required for us to actually have the general pass up and running. And then the telco pass is actually trying to actually have some of the key functionalities that is a, a FCAPS part uh, in, in short. Uh, and then the uh, yellow part is adaptation layer which is an extension to the general pass to make this integration smooth. So the, the major things, if you have to talk about, we will mainly working on three major capabilities. Pass capabilities required for implementation of inner functions, the network functions, and uh, pass capabilities required for managing them, and the pass capabilities to expose enough function service to external customers. So we are talking about external customers here are the end users, or they could be users who are actually above it. Like that could be a service orchestration, that could be an analytic tool, that could be a, a control loop, or that could be any other design tool which actually takes this general pass into Transportation. So this is the way we do the integration of this specific pass layer further down to the, I mean, further up to the other customers. That's what we mean by the last thing. So next slide, please. This is a code specific of what we actually stand and where we stand with respect to XGVLA as of today. Uh, XGVLA, uh, the code has been seeded from uh, uh, the MTCA of Mavenir. It's a pretty uh, versatile uh, platform, which actually has a lot of commercial uh, uh, viability right now, which is it is actually having a lot of adaptation in commercial sites. And we have taken the seed code from there. Uh, thanks to Mavenir for contributing it. And we are working on it still to make it a complete end-to-end -end stretch with uh, certain use cases, which is what we are we'll see in, in the coming slides. So the current uh, scope of the uh, current seed code actually has the CMAS, TMAS, FMAS, West Gateway, the CIM and Helm-based uh, packaging platform. The, the description of it is there in this thing. But the major part of it, what we have covered is the CMAS actually takes care of day zero, day one, and day two configuration flows. The TMAS, which is a topology management service, will be talking about the discovery of KIT services, uh, builds up the 3GPP managed objects. Okay, that is what we call it MOS. Uh, for NFs, for the network functions which are required for using it or consuming it later on. The FMAS, as the name says, is a fault management as a service. So this is the one which is mainly taking care of the alarms, the events and all. And uh, via the uh, uh, the TCA uh, uh, will be work working via the MMS. Uh, the MMS is actually the, uh, the, the management layer which actually talks about uh, metric management, which actually talks to Prometheus and all and takes the metrics from the regular managed objects. 
And along with those two, um, by MMS and Prometheus is what the fault manager collects the events and then events based on subscription and all will be managing it further. So one of the integration points which we are looking at is own app. So we have best based uh, compliant. We are best 7.1 compliant, which is what DCA understands of own app. So what will happen is we will work as the agent to DCA. We'll be, be giving the packets further, the, the CNF packets via Prometheus or West, both of them are possible to DCA for further control loop operations. Uh, West Gateway, as I said, uh, is based on ONAP VESPA, uh, ONAP or VESPA, I mean, uh, project and with enhancement to support multi NF streams. So we can actually have multiple streams of it to be uh, configured and we can actually have data received uh, to, to through the XGBLR to the not bond services. Uh, CIM is an in point uh, uh, concept here, which is a CNF interface uh, module. It's a sidecar which actually is. Uh, integration point for the API for applications. So this is what will take care of all those interaction points for us. And also certain, it will take certain load for us to, to have the sidecar business as we know in HTO and all. So that's exactly what is done by CIM. Um, and then Helm-based packages, of course, this whole thing is done using the helm Bay packages. So it's easy for us to actually have uh, programmability brought into it on, on the need basis. Um, the MS part of it is still in progress. We are expecting the seed code to be done uh, somewhere this year end. Um, and we can actually expect some other things also happening in the Prometheus scale, where uh, uh, Prometheus based metrics is what we will try based on the use case. I mean, again, use case is not what we want to deliver, but we want to keep use case as a verification functionality to ensure that end to end functionality can be showcased. Uh, with that, I think we, we this is what is the overall picture. The current site code, seed code is somewhere around 55k log. Um, the seed was done in December of 2020. And since then, we have been working on different uh, aspects of it. And the complete code is Apache 2 licensing. So it is easy for us to distribute and also to use uh, or consume for the commercial cases also. Um, the main primary language is Golang and Java. Uh, most of it is done in Golang to actually uh, make it you know, adaptable much easier to different platforms. And also we have Java in specific areas where uh, we have used it in the complete C code as of now. So this is not the complete code, as I said, this is what is the current C code and we are expecting more to be uh, done in the coming days. Shihui, next slide please. Okay, so this is where uh, the complete uh, important links are for XGVLI. If you want to come and join us, please uh, make a note of this. Uh, we have the wiki page, which is uh, pretty, uh, Elaborative uh, so far for what we have done. That is actually the GVL Confluence. We also have a GitHub wiki, which was initially done before we were adapted uh, uh, and uh, became a sandbox. In fact, XGVL has been incubated as a sandbox project with LLFN in Jan 2021. Before that, we were using the wiki, wiki, GitHub wiki. Uh, once we got incubated, we have become uh, we have our own uh, space in the wiki of uh, LFN. Um, the TSC meeting happens every Tuesday at uh, 1 p.m. UTC. The meeting ID is there. I mean, you can actually feel free to join us there. We also have uh, a subgroup every day. So subgroup is where we are discussing about the use cases. Uh, this is where we actually discuss about uh, a 5G slicing. Right now, we are expecting a 5G slicing based use case for the end-to-end -end slice to be done. At least uh, a part of the end-to-end -end slice is what we can start with for uh, the coming releases. And then we will try to take it forward of that. There's also chatting tool. Uh, we use two different tools. One is WhatsApp, other is Slack channel. Uh, both of them are available, as I said. Uh, we have admin uh, for the Slack, for the WhatsApp. If anyone's interested, you can actually say, shoot a mail to uh, the TSC group, the mailing list actually what we have down, and we'll be able to add you there. Also, we have a Slack channel where you, if you want to join, you can actually feel free to join us to have further discussion. The code repositories are in the GitHub right now. Uh, you can see the slide of it, github slash com slash xgvela, github.com slash xgvela, where we have the complete code repo. The current code is, is actually a combination of what we just discussed sometime before. And uh, you can feel free to download. We also have a very detailed developer guide uh, along with the code to make users understand the code and make them actually up and running. Uh, the mailing list, as I said to you, we have two mailing lists. One is main, other is TSC. Uh, both of them can be used for different purposes. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, ping to either of the groups and we'll be able to assist you further. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so this is the release info as I was talking about something before. Uh, the release one is expected somewhere this month. I mean, uh, the month end is one we are expecting. The main contents of it would be the reference architecture or the architecture diagram, which we have been discussing about. Uh, we will try to actually provide the capability code. Uh, I mean, the, the 
Telco Pass uh, capability code contributed by Mevane, that is MTC coming from MTCL, CR from MTCL, and developer guide. So this too is what we already have ready, and we are making it further improvements to it. Um, if anyone wants to actually help us with that, feel free to join us. Uh, we will be more than glad to take your help in whatever way. And you please provide your suggestions and corrections if you feel anything. We can discuss about it and we can take it forward. The future plans as such are ready. I mean, it's a huge list. Uh, I think we try to cut it short to something uh, simple here. Um, open source uh, NetConf uh, solution for CMAS. Uh, this is uh, um, something which we are thinking about, one of the candidates being uh, NetOpia. So uh, the other is CI CD pipeline. Now, Vixuela. Uh, doesn't have a complete CICD because the code which we have right now taken is only one part of it. It's the complete functionality as we move on. We also want to keep the continuous uh, CI, I mean, the continuous implement, continuous, sorry, continuous integration, continuous development to be part of this. And also we want to enhance our DevOps part of it to make sure that we have a build time, uh, daily builds, and also corrections of the code with respect to the uh, static checks and all, all these things to be taken care of into consideration. Uh, the prototype building is something which we are working on as a part of the uh, use case also, and also as a separate thing. We want to keep a simple use case to start with, or a verification, I would say, to start with. And that's where we want to have the integration with General Pass um, to build a complete prototype. Uh, we are working with OKD. Red Hat is doing a great job in helping us to do some uh, progress in this case. Uh, demos involves uh, uh, seed code plus CNF plus one app. Uh, we want to actually have a demo which actually takes care of the orchestration part, the design onboarding, uh, and also the integration part of um, the uh, CNF itself or, or the XGVL itself with respect to ONAP. As I said, we have uh, two major integration points with ONAP. One is on the orchestration layer, where do we do the instantiation of the cloud. Uh, right now, the cloud infra itself is actually a black box for uh, uh, ONAP. With integration of XGVILA, it becomes much easier for us to understand which clouds are being configured, and we can also orchestrate the clouds itself as per the need of the application being run. The other being the DCAE, uh, where we actually have the data collection. It will help us in the day two operation, uh, again, the control loop and day two integrations and operations also, uh, which will help us to actually manage the system better. So it comes post instantiation level, where we will be able to do the integration better for entire end to end solution. So also the continuous telco pass uh, functionality and application layer is being explored. Uh, is being explored. Uh, this is something which actually goes hand in hand and we require all your support to make it better. Feel free to join us. Any questions, we can take it forward. Thank you.